Right now, I'd like to bring in to discuss Kalpbaum Capital Management, Management's President Gary Kalpbaum, Bull Tick Capital Markets Chief Strategist Captain Rooney Vera, and the Bonson Group's David Bonson. Uh, David Bonson, run hot. That could have been an ACDC song. It, there, it certainly feels like we're, <laughs> we're doing some heavy metal stuff here, uh, and the markets are, are reacting to this. What are your thoughts? Because there are a lot of people who believe the Fed made a mistake a long time ago. Maybe they've crossed the Rubicon and they can't turn back. They're gone down its accommodative path, and I don't know how they can get off of it without roiling the markets. Well, they certainly cannot get off of it without roiling the markets. We learned that in the late part of 2018. But when Gary was saying that he wishes they weren't talking already about 2022, I agree that they shouldn't, but I certainly don't agree that I'm surprised that they're doing it. And I doubt Gary's surprised either. I just want to remind everybody, the financial crisis of 2008 was in 2008. They kept the zero bound until 2016, and they really didn't start raising mm-hmm. meaningfully until 2017. It was almost a decade of zero percent. They're being generous by saying two years. It's going to be longer than two years because once you've touched this thing, you can't disconnect from it. To your point, going into the Great Recession, the Fed balance sheet was eight hundred uh, billion, and by two thousand and fifteen, four and a half trillion dollars. Of course, David Bonson, Operation Twist got its name from Chubby Checker's famous uh, song and dance craze, because in nineteen sixty one was the first time the Fed got creative like this, and ever since then the pressure has been on to find a way to get even more creative. We know at some point mm-hmm. they're going to have to figure out a way to unwind this, but from an investor's point of view, how are you? Do you think? It's appropriate for the emergency that we're in right now. Well, I think that we have to make a distinction between us talking on this panel about what we believe they ought to do and what we believe they're going to do, which Mm -hmm. is how we have to invest capital for our clients. See, Gary and I agree 100 percent on the side effects of what the Fed's doing. But I think that Catherine's point about uh, Operation Twist blended with yield curve control is what's going to happen. They're going to steepen the yield curve and they're going to force the low end of the curve down when market forces want to push it a bit higher. But see, the issue that never gets talked about and hasn't been talked about yet on the panel is why all of this is the case. It's not just the Fed trying to coddle those of us in the stock market. This goes back way before Bernanke, by the way. It was Greenspan in 98 who was cutting rates when the economy was growing over 5%. This really is about excessive government spending. Eventually, the next tool to your question that the Fed's going to pull out is some better form of monetization, the Japanification of our economy, because we have too much government debt and its spending is not getting under control and it's not going to get under control. That's the real issue here that dovetails with central bank policy. So then let's get back to how this is informing your investments, David Bonson. You brought it up. Uh, Does this change your approach? Does it change the way our audience should approach their portfolio? It absolutely does. And it's the biggest frustration I have with those of us who are critics of the Fed, who recognize the way they're distorting markets, the way they're punishing savers. I can say all those things just like Gary and Catherine, it sounds like mostly agree with me. And yet at the same time, understand that I have to invest for my clients based on what is not what I want to be. And I I believe very much that that yield curve is going to be forced down and we have to recognize the bid that creates for risk assets. You know, David, uh, last January, after after hiking rates four times in 2018, it was early January, and it was sort of innocuous, Not didn't get a lot of coverage, but Jay Powell made a statement that wage inflation wasn't price inflation. And I thought that was a great epiphany for the Federal Reserve. But to Gary's point, that pendulum keeps swinging over, and all of a sudden, someone who was considered something of a hawk might be the ultimate dove. And he looks like he's going to make it rain for a long time. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's right. His, his uh, uh, basic admission was that the Phillips curve is broken. Wage inflation mm-hmm. is not price inflation. But Milton Friedman was right, except for this is not what Milton Friedman was talking about. The, the reality is that there's no velocity of this money and the Fed has no ability to create velocity. They haven't done it in Japan in 25 years. This is a deflationary spiral because the government spending mm-hmm. is out of control and it's compressing growth 
and forcing yields down. The Fed is distorting markets. The Fed's doing other bad things, but it's not inflationary. We have to accept that we're in a secular deflationary period where they're bidding risk assets up, but they're against deflationary pressures. Ultimately, the real prescription for this is a bigger private sector and a smaller government sector. That's what will cure all these problems. In the meantime, we're stuck with what Gary's worried about, which is one one man controlling everything. (laughs) 